I'm uh, Blaze Eitner. I teach at Harvard Westlake School. I currently teach AP Biology and Oceanography and Marine Biology. So how did I get uh, the various animals in the room? Well, um, most of them over the years, and these are not the only ones that I've had, but the, the ones that I've had over the years have mostly been uh, refugees from people who have had them and then got either tired of keeping them or the animals have outgrown the accommodations that they had for them originally and the people again, just didn't want to upgrade their cages or whatever and I happen to have one. Um, that's the case for most of the animals I've had over the years. This is Optimus Prime and this illustrates the problem with giving young people the right to vote because that was by vote, uh, popular vote a few years ago. I let the students choose the name. See, uh, he's got really long claws because uh, green iguanas are arboreal. They are tree dwellers. So they do a lot of climbing. So he's got the flexible limbs with the big claws for helping to grip the trees as he climbs. Uh, he can also, though, use them defensively. So in addition to biting, he can also scratch. and. He will try to scratch me if uh, he gets a chance. Uh, this is a wild-caught gopher snake that uh, my neighbor actually across the street caught, gave to my son. Um, and eventually, as it started to grow, I had a bigger cage here at school and we decided to move it here. Someday I may release it, but it's doing very well in captivity right now, so it's a very common local snake. It might be a little hungry here, so hopefully I won't get bit. It's used to being fed by hand, so I have to be a little careful here. Let it know that it's me and not a mouse. It's me. No, it's me. Don't you hit me. There. It might be better if I come back here first. Once I've actually got it, then it knows that it's not. There we go. So gopher snakes are naturally docile. They. Uh, for the most part. Every so often you'll find uh, an individual that'll be aggressive, but this one is typical of most gopher snakes, which is very sweet. This is Spike. My son named him Spike years ago. Uh, these were all uh, bought. These are not refugees from anybody's uh, unwanted uh, tank or anything like that, or any, anybody's unwanted specimens. But uh, students really uh, get a kick out of this. Of course, being in an oceanography and marine biology classroom, it's perfect for the, for the room and for the subject I teach. And, uh, this is a, a diamond goby, and it helps to keep the bottom clean. You'll notice it goes around and eats the sand, takes the sand in, filters it through its mouth and its gill rakers, and uh, takes food particles out of the sand, but also helps to keep the sand clean in the process. So students get a real kick out of watching that fish walk go around and eat the bottom. This is uh, Sheila, and uh, she's a very sweet bearded dragon. They're native to Australia, and they're really extreme desert animals, but uh, they're very popular as pets because they're very hardy, kind of large, you know, spectacular lizards because of their size and their appearance, but they're also extremely sweet. I, I think people react to them in a variety of ways. Some students have a genuine interest in animals and little things like that. And for a student like me growing up, the, the kind of kid I was, I would really like to be around animals. I always loved going to the zoo and I would have loved being in the classroom. It's just something that fed that interest. So I think students and it lightens up the room. It makes it, it's, it's a biology classroom. You should have some living things in a biology classroom. 